how to make them useful for real-time uh, um, game engine applications. Um, so we've got this shape here, which we're going to ignore for a moment, and I'm going to make a box from a primitive. I'm going to make the box. Let's make it grey. Give it a grey material. And this method is how we usually make well, how I usually make models by giving it sides, cross sections, and converting it to an editable poly. Extruding, there's a whole range of tools you can use. Selecting faces, you can copy the faces, let's not do that. Selecting faces again. Extruding. I'm just extruding here. There's a whole, as I say, there's a whole range of s skills. I mean, you know, tools, <laughs> skills. This could be skills. Anyway, that's the basic concept of making real time meshes. And then you can turbo smooth it so it further makes a clean mesh. Let's just delete that, get rid of that rubbish. And let's go to this nice shape here. Which is made up of a selection of one, two, th yeah, one, two, <laughs> three, four, six primitives. I think if I can count correctly, um, as you see, they're all they're not related or attached to each other, um, just placed. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to use the pro boolean to make a mesh, a clean mesh, just by boolean joining these together, like you do in the old boolean method but with pro boolean it, it makes a really clean mesh that you can um, take to game engines that's the important thing about the new pro boolean option it's the the old boolean made pretty nasty meshes and had a tendency to crash in some of the previous versions of max um, and uh, and then it wasn't that you know it was good but the the new pro boolean is is the business um, if you like that sort of thing. So you go to compound objects, not that one, remember? It's that one, pro boolean. Press that. And go down to the parameters and press union. So make sure it's all joined together. You can do intersection, subtract, subtraction, blah, blah, blah. Start and all that sort of stuff. But this one is just union. So start clicking and it will go white. And that means that it's all now nicely joined together. And as you pick, you can change the um, the sub them to subtractions and unions. And then, what you want to do is make quadrilateral tessellation. This is really important for making a clean mesh for game engines because it makes quads and equals the quads out. So when we press it, it automatically makes lots of quads that will be better in a game engine. And if you don't do that, if you make complex meshes with wireframes all over the place, they can have the tendency to crash, especially in older and less powerful game engines. So we can change the quad size. It's recommendable to reduce the quad size, obviously, because it's a game engine. Let's ignore the decimation this time. So we've got the clean mesh. I mean to be honest this shape would uh, um, be simpler to make the old method but let's convert it to editable poly. But this, remember this is an example for really complex shapes. This is for example if you're making if you want to make a quick something like a car or a ship for game level use and it's just really quick you can model it make it with lots and lots of primitive blocks um, and uh, and then quickly pro boolean it up or if you wanted to make a wall relief or something it, it really does make quick clean meshes for your um, real time and game engine purposes and also just for rendering um, pre-rendering because it because the meshes turn out to be low low quality low poly as you've got here eight seven eight eight nine five 
in the properties that you can it renders quite quickly so if you're doing something that doesn't need lots of polygons it's fine so let's um, do the usual making the pivots in the center or export to game studio as shown in another example and remember XYZ is zero three zeros and then just do the usual if you can remember you probably can export selected and so let's take it to the desktop this time and go to 3ds and type in structure obviously if you're exporting to another game engine it might require um, dot x files or that sort of thing so preserve texture coordinates do that obviously this one's not textured but the example I'll show you in the engine is using the un unwrap UVW method which was in another example so here we've got the wed level with I've just multiplied this same mesh lots of times it's got a baked texture on that's what you can see why you can see the shading on it which um, makes it look nice can make <laughs> can make it look nice in a game engine this doesn't necessarily look so nice but as you can see we're just going to do a test with all these meshes made from the pro boolean tool in an actual real life game game engine real time engine and um, see if there's it crashes or if there's a drag so let's press build map okay it's the usual build and now it's working in the game engine so it's opened up and here we're walking around okay fairly bad FPS but this is just again the it's been multiplied quite a lot of times and there doesn't seem to be any crashes so it's pretty cool a pretty cool way to as I say get quick meshes and make them for real-time work and um, and for really complex meshes is a good good way to do it as well okay thanks for um, listening to this tutorial if you've got any comments just please say and that's great cool